One thing I get asked all the time is, can I explain how to do scaling in Nomad for 3D print? So this video is just a quick video about that exact subject. Very simple, very straightforward, and gets you up and running in a couple of minutes. So I've been asked in recent weeks to do a, a quick video on um, how to get scaling right. And I've done this video before, but I think it's time to reiterate it with this latest version of Nomad. So I'm just going to show you how I would get something like this. So let me just get rid of that auto save. So something like this model, how would we get this ready for 3D print in terms of a scaling issue or, or scaling uh, routine? So we'll turn post-process off. I'm actually just gonna mash it all together. So I'm gonna select everything in the stack completely. And I'm just gonna use the um, voxel merge. In fact, you don't need to do that. You could just do join if you wished, and that would give it you all in one model. And um, then we can, we can from that point you can decide what you want to do with it so if you um if you have a look at the model itself um and see how many polygons it is at the moment it's actually in scene vertices it's 2.1 million so i could use uh, i could just bring it down with uh, a decimation but what i'm going to do is i'm going to first of all just use um the voxel remesh and see what happens so i'll, I'll go quite high like so, and I'll just remesh it and see what happens, see what the quality is like. So it's done it, and it's now brought it down to 500,000. So I can probably live with that. I could go lower if I felt like it needed it, but let's just throw some, like a, a random color of blue on there so it looks like it's a 3D printed item. Take the metalness down and the roughness up, and we'll just go force paint all, and there you go. That's what it's gonna look like in Chitterbox or Lychee Slicer or anything of that nature. So, um, let's get it out then. So one thing we can do at this point, we could just export it. So there are a few new export functions in here, but that's this is all very straightforward for anyone who knows how to use Nomad. Um, you just come in here and you pick GLTF, OBJ or STL. Um, but before we do that, how do we know how big it is? So here's how I normally do it. So first of all, I'm gonna open a cube. So I'm gonna add to the scene and I'm gonna do a box. Now that box already is, let's find out where the floor is first of all. So we put a grid on and you can see that it's on the floor already there. So if I take perspective off and snap it to the front and then we move our character up to the floor, that's always a good point to start with. Now, the next thing is with the cube, how big is that cube? So it goes by units of one. So if I, let me just bring that to the front so we can clearly um, see it. Let's have a look what this says. So scale is one. Now I happen to know that that is one millimeter. So the units in um, Nomad are based on millimeters and that, that literally is a one millimeter cube. So that's no good. We need to rescale that. So from that cube, if we go to the settings so down into this menu and we look for the size and it's one and that's on X. So it's proportional at the moment. So we've got X, Y and Z. So this cube is going to be the same size all over. And I'm just going to set that to 70 and that, that'll be a 70 mil cube. So now it's quite big. So I'll push that now to the back like so. Snap this to the front again. And then um, let's just make sure it's snapped to the front and then we'll move that cube up and then we'll take our character and we will both scale it with the outer orange and we'll move it with the gizmo so you can see now there that he is now within that tolerance of that 70 mil that i wanted that's a very very analog simple way of doing it but let's just take some dimensions off him and see what that that comes like so perspective um, oh, sorry, leave the perspective off. We'll just snap it again. The reason it, 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 it goes off the screen is it when you snap, it can go snap front or snap back. Um, uh, and what we'll do is we'll hide the cube for the moment and we'll just go down to the bottom and get measure. And we'll just take some measurements across here. So he's going to be across his belly, he's going to be 24 mil. From fingertip to fingertip, he's going to be 76 mil. From head to toe, roughly, and you have to be careful here um, because sometimes, let me show you, um, you might do this and it might go off at an angle because this will look 
significantly different um, depending on where you start the point and end the point. So it's not totally accurate. So if you spin this round now, you'll see that's got that angle on it as well. So it isn't ideal uh, in, in doing it that way. And it's much better to take a reading off that cube, which would give you a straight up and down. But we now know that is within our 70 mil tolerance for our height. So we can go ahead and export that. Um, so th that gives us an absolute confidence that we've got a 70 mil item and it's um, it's 70 mil on the one on the one dimension and we've checked it across the other dimensions if you want you can zoom in you can even do things like this you can check things like the eyeballs so they're like two mil eyeballs and things like that so you can of course use um, any of the um, desktop slicing softwares like Chitterbox or Lychee Slicer but this is pick a slice on the iPad so I just thought it might be nice to use this instead of uh, uh, going to a desktop so we've got a new scene so we'll bring in the mesh and we're going to bring in our Wallace character and we don't need to do anything else other than look at it because if you look at him straight away um, and basically we've got move scale and rotate which is quite normal but actually if you look around this is set up for my largest printer which is a Piopoli Phenom which has got a huge uh, Z height but if you look on the screen carefully straight away you can even see down here that the height already is showing 69.95 millimeters so without doing anything else we know we've already got our model at the right size. It's showing these uh, bits underneath because it's where it's saying it will need supporting, um, which is what supporting and slicing is all about. Um, this is actually a great piece of software. If you, uh, if you uh, don't have this, it's worth having a look. It is a subscription, um, but I think it's quite well worth it if you want to keep everything on your iPad. So again, this is pick a slice. Um, but uh, that just shows straight away that the scaling is accurate. So just bear in mind that everything is set up before you export it out and then you don't have to do any messing or messing around or scaling in your slicer. While we're in here, why don't we just do some auto supports? And there you go. So it just shows um, how good this piece of software is. So it's lifted it off the bed and it's supported it without us moving it around. We can add extras should we need them. Um, we can go in and just add whatever we need um but um there you go uh obviously that everybody does their 3d prints differently and everybody likes to do their supports differently but this is just uh, showing you um the, the scaling isn't it so uh have a go of it and see how you get on